Hi friends, this is the e-news for the week of November 6th. Uh, November 6th, of course, today that you are receiving this is a Wednesday, the day after election day in our country. And all transparency, we're recording this before the election. So we have no idea, I have no idea uh, how it went or who won, um, all those kinds of things. So I just want to be transparent with you. I will tell you that this past Sunday, we had a wonderful worship. We celebrated God's gift of the saints. And we had 12 people, uh, members of this church family who died this past year. What I really appreciate is in the scripture, when the apostle writes about those who have died in Christ, he uses the term, they fell asleep. And so I, I want us to sort of have that in our mind um, in fact, I had a funeral this past Saturday at the cemetery. I was doing the committal service, and after uh, it was over and the family had left, there was a man who had been walking the cemetery, but who stopped to listen uh, to the committal service. And he waited his turn till everybody was gone. He came up and he had some questions, and he asked. He said, I have questions about the mystery of death. He said, um, I appreciated what you said, and I believe what you said, but I still have more questions. Where is the person who dies? Because the resurrection doesn't happen until Jesus returns. And I thought it was a great question. And this is my humble take on that. It's a theological uh, difficulty for a lot of people. But I used Paul's term, fall asleep. I said, I like that because it means uh, for me that the person who dies in Christ is asleep. The, some people call it soul sleep. Some people call it soul rest. We can say that the scripture affirms that when, it's, when we are absent from the body, we are present with the Lord. And Jesus even says to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. But it seems that the resurrection uh, happens when Christ returns. So we're not resurrected individually, that there's a, there is a resurrection of the dead when Christ returns. But our loved ones are in God's presence and they are having a soul rest or a soul sleep. I hope that is a little bit helpful and maybe clarifying for some of us. But I really wanted today to read, again, not knowing what yesterday uh, held for the elections. I wanted to read what I read on Sunday morning uh, to the congregation just as a preparation for how we can live as Christians. Psalm 146 is a great word for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Now hear these words. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord will reign forever, your God, to all generations. So, beloved, let's not put our hope in the government, the elected officials, uh, the people who are appointed, Let's always remember to put our trust in the God who is sovereign over all and the one who is eternal. Not a president for a term, not a senator for a term, uh, not in any uh, human being because when they die, their dreams perish with them. But God's faith is forever. The other thing I encouraged folks with on Sunday that I want to remind us again of the teachings of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, how important it is not to be haughty or proud or angry in spirit, 
but poor in spirit, meaning dependent upon God. Because then we know that the kingdom of heaven is ours. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Someone who's meek is not weak. Someone who's meek is the one who trusts God no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance. One who does not have to have their own way. One do, who does not have to always be in the right or on the right side. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Beloved, the church, the people of God, the body of Christ, we have a great opportunity in our world today to live out the gospel in word and deed, to speak the good news of God's love for us in Christ, the forgiveness and grace that is there for all who will put their trust in him, and also to live it out by not being swayed by the doctrines or the winds of culture, by not being too impressed uh, by worldly successes, but to remember our hope is in the Lord. I am here and would love to talk with anybody who's struggling with these things. I am happy to listen and to share um, how I try to maintain my sanity uh, in the chaos. I would encourage you, if you uh, are available on Wednesday nights, to join us for Bible study on Zoom. Uh, reach out and we can send you a link. But we are in the book of Genesis. We're talking about God's order. In other words, God's creation. Because God has ordered things to make sense for his glory and for our well-being. So it's good to go and revisit how did God create and set the world to work. Uh, so let me invite you to that. Other Bible studies and small groups, I'm sure, would be just as helpful. We are here. We look forward to seeing you on Sundays always. Reach out. Give us a call if we can be of any help. We love you. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.